Since the last stock market crash, investors have been quickly adding SCHD to their stock portfolios because of its great long-term appreciation over the last five years of over 12.5% and its high dividend yield of nearly 3.5%, which is a great combination for passive income from dividends as well as building a large nest egg to pull from in retirement. SCHD also has some of the best blue chip dividend stocks, that of Broadcom, Merck, Home Depot, and Verizon to provide stability and reliability in the long run with lower volatility as these stocks have been around forever, are dividend kings, and won't go anywhere anytime soon. However, with all these great benefits of SCHD, I feel like most investors don't really know how much SCHD to add to their portfolios or even how much SCHD to buy to really take advantage of the opportunity in the long run to really achieve the best results. But in this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly how much SCHD you should buy based off of your age, your time horizon, as well as your risk tolerance so you can have higher returns in the long run, retire with more money by the end of your investing journey, and sleep better at night knowing that you have the right amount of SCHD in your ETF or your stock portfolio. Now this allocation strategy that I've developed works for pretty much any dividend ETF like DGRW, DGRO, VYM, VIG, etc but not monthly dividend ETFs, so keep that in mind. Just to be straight up, if you really want to achieve the best results in the long run, do not, I repeat, do not have SCHD as 100% of your stock portfolio or the only ETF in your stock portfolio with like 100% allocation to it. Reason being is because dividend ETFs are never promised to outperform something like the SP 500 in the long run. It's nearly impossible for any ETF to do that. Dividend ETFs are only outperform like once every four to five years in my opinion. So don't have SCHD with all your money in it or just full blown go all into SCHD if you really want to maximize your long term wealth. Now before we get started, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice, this is just my opinion of what I believe is the best way to achieve the best results for SCHD and dividend investors. With all that out of the way, I have three age categories and three assumptions. The first is your age 18 to 35, the second is your age 36 to 50, and the third group is age 51 to 65 plus into your retirement. With the first category of young investors, investing in SHD or dividend ETFs is a great way to build up those dividend payments and write out compound interest. At this age, most likely you have a higher risk tolerance because you have plenty of time until retirement of age 65 and up or even as early as your 50s because you started investing earlier than those in the other two categories. The portfolio composition I would say is optimal at this age range is to have SCHD at no more than 20% of your stock portfolio. So for every $100 that you invest into SCHD, have no more than $20 go into it and out of the whole entire stock portfolio. But trust me, 20% is plenty. Reason being is because at this age of your life, you should be taking on a little bit more risk with a higher risk tolerance because come on guys, live a little. Have a, you know, spice up your stock portfolio a little bit. By having growth ETFs or growth stocks in your portfolio to have the opportunity to outperform the SP500 or at least keep in line with the SP500 by investing in the index directly with something like VOO, IVV, or even SPLG. SCHD is less riskier than the SP500 and even growth ETFs like SCHG or BGT because dividend stocks are seen as less risky with lower betas and quite boring business models because they don't really grow their businesses as fast as those high flying and sexy tech stocks. Now 20% to SHD might not seem like a high allocation, 20% is plenty. I have a back tester on your screen that shows us investing $100,000 into two portfolios over the past 10 years of performance while reinvesting dividends annually. With our first portfolio, we have 100% into SCHD versus 20% to SHD and the other 80% is split between 40% into VOO which is SP500 index fund ETF and 40% to a growth ETF like SEHG and the results are shocking and the winner is having 20% to SCHD wins and overall returns as it achieves a higher return over the past 10 years of over 13% compounded annual returns and returning nearly $350,000 
from its initial investment of 100K. And 100% SDHD is lower of a return at under 11% per year, giving us just under $300,000 in its returns from our initial investment of $100,000. Now, just to show that SDHD is indeed less risky, the worst year for only SDHD is under 6% in losses in that year, and 20% SDHD with growth stocks at its worst gave negative 20% returns over its worst year. So you can see that there's a lot of volatility versus having 100% SDHD and versus having 20% SDHD with the rest into growth stocks. The second category is those between the age of 36 to 50. At this age, your risk tolerance should be inherently lower than those in their 20s and early 30s. Maybe you finally paid off your college or credit card debt. You might have a mortgage and you really can't afford to lose a ton of money if the stock market takes a turn for the worst into a full-blown recession. With this medium risk tolerance, I would say to allocate no more than 50% of your portfolio into SCHD. A lot of robo-advisors have something like 60% into dividend stocks at this age range, but I say to have 50% because if you really love those high dividend payments coming in and prefer to have something to live off your dividend income, then yeah, of course, you know, go ahead and have SHD in the upper range near that 50% allocation. Now the other 50% of your portfolio should go into something like an SP500 index fund. That's just my preference. I recommend a lot of people when they ask me of what ETF to invest in is to invest in a simple and plain old SP500 index fund or total stock market index fund or even a growth ETF or stock. But if you really prefer the higher returns and want to wait to have all those dividend income and payments later rather than right now, then yeah, go ahead and have the lower range of 20 to 35 percent of SHD into your stock portfolio. Now, on our back tester, we have 50% to SCHD with the other 25% into VOO and the other 25% into our growth ETF of SCHG compared to having 100% into SCHD as our two portfolio comparisons with, like I said, $100,000 invested over the course of 10 years. Now, the winner of the results is having 50% to SCHD of course, as it achieves a higher return of around 12.5% and returning well over $300,000 from our initial $100,000 investment. And having 100% to SCHD is lower of a return at just under 11%, giving us under $300,000. Now, the positives of having 50% to SCHD compared to previously of having 20% is we might give up just a couple percent to returns, and yeah, we might have a less returns overall and money in our nest egg however we do have more dividend income from having a higher exposure to SCHD and we will have lower volatility because SCHD is less risky so at this age range you will get great returns great dividend payments for passive income to pay off some expenses in retirement or just expenses in general and we will have lower volatility to keep our nest egg safe and sound now like I said before you don't have to have 50% to SCHD at this age range you can have something like 25 35% whatever, and this will achieve higher returns in the long run than having a higher exposure of dividends into SCHD, but you will give up a lower dividend income into retirement and you will have higher volatility. So just keep that in mind. Lastly, we have those near retirement, which I hope you have the kids out of the house and maybe paid off your car, maybe you paid off your mortgage, and you made wise financial decisions to get to enjoy this next chapter into your life. You should have a lower risk tolerance and you should be preserving your wealth rather than accumulating it compared to the two categories I mentioned previously. The recommended percentage into SCHD I have in mind for this group of people is honestly you could go up to 100% to SCHD, but a range I would say is anywhere between 50 and 100%. And if you've been investing in SCHD for a while now, you should be having massive dividend payments that have compounded over the past 10 plus years at least, and you will still be achieving a really high return that is comfortably gonna be building up your nest egg over time into retirement and past it. SHD is definitely better than some boring CD or high yield savings account depending on interest rates in the market cycle. SHD is definitely better than bonds and real estate investment trusts in my opinion, which is why I love SHD near retirement, in retirement, and beyond. Here's SHD compared to the other alternatives for retirees. As you can see, SHD is definitely one of the best investments over the past five plus years by getting reliable returns, stable dividend income, and it's gonna be just better, less boring. I know dividend stocks might be boring, 
Different ETFs might seem boring and not as exciting as a growth stock. Sometimes boring is the best decision because over time, you'll be building up your returns and your dividend income. And that about wraps it up for this video, guys. If you guys like this video, please give it a like for this new cute puppy that I just got. Now comment down below what percentage allocation you have to SCHD in your stock portfolio or even any other dividend ETF that I just mentioned previously, like a Vanguard dividend ETF or any other ETF by iShares, etc. I love you guys so much. Hopefully you guys crush in the stock market and even into retirement. I love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.